Welcome to another episode of the UAS Weekly News Update. This week I want to talk about a lot of drone delivery first. There's been a lot of, of uh, companies out there claiming first things, so I'm going to talk about two of them, two of the main big ones. I want to talk about Airbus and Drone Deploy that are entering into a partnership. I also want to talk about PIX4D, which is for those of you that do mapping, they just came up with a new software called uh, PIX4D React. I also want to talk about a new drone bill that's in uh, the house, I think, right now, uh, talking about restricting the U.S. government from using foreign drones. And then last, I'll finish with a Drones for Good story. So let's go ahead and get started. I talk a lot about drone deliveries, and, and the reason is because this is kind of a booming uh, industry at the moment, and there's a lot of players, key players out there. Now you've heard me talk about Alphabet Wings. Uh, if you've been following for a while, uh, the first few episodes that we did in this uh, in this series, I was talking about Wings. And then we talked about FedEx, and we talked about uh, UPS that did their own thing. So this week I want to talk about Wings that is actually partnering with FedEx and Walgreens, and also one of their local uh, retailer. And they claim to have done the first commercial drone delivery to U.S. homes. Now, we've talked about drone deliveries and we've talked about um, the, the fact that they have been doing some testing. Now, this is the first drone delivery that is done to actual U.S. homes directly to the customer. There's been also a lot of delivery that have been done from business to business. So this is a little bit different. Now, this is happening in uh, Christianburg, uh, Virginia. And uh, what's happening is the, the, the wing is using their certificate. They, they were the first one to receive an air carrier certificate from the FAA on October 18th of this year. And now they're basically providing the service to customers from Walgreens and this local retailer called Sugar Magnolia. And uh, these uh, customers can place their order and then the UAS takes off and goes and delivers the package directly to their home. Um, this is also something that FedEx is partnering with Wings and providing with the FedEx Express. They're delivering the package directly to the home of the customer. Now, at the same time, UPS and CVS entered into a, an agreement, a letter of intent to deliver medication to homes. Now, we know that UPS, we've talked about it a couple of weeks ago, get their Part 135 certification as well. And they've been working with hospitals and hospital campuses to deliver goods to directly to the campus. And uh, this is kind of an expansion of this service where they're going to be basically providing medication directly to the homes uh, on top of providing to the hospitals. Now, these flights are all autonomous. They're all in a predetermined path. And UPS, for example, can go up to 12.5 miles away. Now, they also said that as the technology gets better, they'll be able to go further. Now, this is obviously beyond line of sight, which they have the waiver for. Now, in terms of the, the technical uh, specs, uh, they can put a package up to five pounds on these drones. Now, some concerns that came out of the article that I was reading from the interview uh, they, they said that they're still concerned about hacking and intercepting of the drones, especially if you have medication in there. Uh, they're concerned about the weight and the size limitation at this stage. Uh, five pounds is not really all that much for one flight. Um, also, some concerns about uh, identification verification. So especially if you're going to have medication going to the customer, you got to make sure that it goes to the right person. And obviously, there's always this uh, concern of increased drone traffic, which is going to take over the sky. I'm concerned about that personally. I like my personal space. I live in a very quiet area and I like my area to stay quiet. And obviously, the cost is going to be something that is going to have to be taken into account. Uh, all these companies have spent millions and millions trying to get these programs developed. So at one point, uh, there's going to have to, they're going to have to recoup the cost for doing this. Now, um, UPS has said that they've been working with this company called WakeMed and they've actually been able to deliver goods. What used to take about 19 minutes on average now takes three minutes uh, for short trips to get the delivery done. This is important. UPS is focusing on the medical field. Uh, very important to get some of these samples to be tested, for example, in cases where uh, the, the patient needs to get a response very quickly. So I think this is a great application. Uh, I think the medical field is gonna, is gonna benefit a lot. And in the end, you and I, the customer, are also gonna benefit from this. So I think that's a great application right here. So I'll put some link down at the bottom. Let me know what you think about all these uh, firsts that we see out here. I'm really excited. I, I, like, I like to be uh, kind of in the, in the middle of all this as it's happening. I think it's a very ex exciting time to be alive for uh, this part of the, the drone industry. 
Next topic, Airbus and Drone Deploy are entering into a partnership to create a traffic management solution and uh, they're integrating Lance into it. Now, you may not know this, but Airbus actually has had a Lance approval for a, a little while now. They've only been using it internally. Now it's actually part of Drone Deploy into the software. So now you can actually submit your Lance request via Drone Deploy. Now, if you do any kind of mapping, you know what Drone Deploy is. It's, uh, it's a, an app that you're gonna be able to use to create the pattern used to do the mapping. So. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see Airbus, the, the giant, getting into this uh, this business. Not surprising, just interesting. And uh, we'll, we'll likely see where this goes in the future. But their goal is to start with the Lance integration and then later grow into an air traffic management that's going to help them uh, manage basically uh, other aircraft at the same time as drone. So air traffic management, is, I think, is going to be one of these areas that's going to we're going to see a lot of changes over the next couple of years and over the next decade. I think when we look back at today in the next decade, we're going to laugh at uh, the way that things are being done uh, just because it's going to it's going to I think personally, I think it's going to increase and and improve so much in the next 10 years. Speaking of mapping, Pix4D, which is one of the software that uh, you can use to do mapping, uh, just came up with a new service for emergency response team. And what they're trying to do here is they're trying to cater to the uh, users that want to get data done quickly. Uh, if any of you are familiar with Pix4D or actually any of the software out there that are treating the images, you're going to take hundreds of images and then out of it you have to create a product, a 3D map, a 2D ortho map or whatever it is, and that takes time. Uh, in some cases, if you do a 3D map and render it, it can take uh, several hours and sometimes maybe even a day or a couple days. They're coming up with this new software called Pix4D React and it's designed to give you the data and, and collect the data and give you a map in minutes only, which is very important in an emergency situation if you want to collect the data put it on the monitor and then have your team look at it and then go and react. So uh, I think it's a great idea, quite frankly. I think this is something that's been missing. Uh, I'm not sure what the, 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 the engine behind it to make it that much faster. I'm sure it's not going to be as precise as what you would do for several hours of rendering, but I think it's a great start. Uh, there is a video and you can see it right here in the background where they're kind of showing the, the before and after uh, perfect for hurricanes, for example, for earthquakes, for wildfires, where the area looks completely different than what it did on satellite data that may have been recorded months ago or years ago. Now you're going into an area that looks completely different. So now you can have an overlay of the two different areas and see exactly the changes and see exactly where your team needs to go. So uh, the price tag is actually $32.50 a month. Now I'm sure this is an add-on to the 200 and some dollars a month that Pix4D requires. But if you're using Pix4D already and you have it, then 30 bucks on top of it, I don't think is uh, that big of a deal. So um, I'll put a link again in the description if you want to see more videos about this, I think it's really interesting. Also, let me know in the comments what you think about all this uh, cool technology, which I think this is in the, in the drones for good department right here. Talking about regulation, last week we talked about this Utah uh, gentleman that wanted to, uh, Utah senator, that wanted to have a bill where it would allow the states to control the first 200 feet of airspace. Now, something just passed, not passed, something was adopted in, uh, in the House this week. It's called the Drone Origin Security Enhancement Act. And what this act would do is it would prevent some government agencies from purchasing drones based solely on where the country of manufacture is and without regards to any of the uh, technical, technical specs of the drone. Now, what this is designed to do is designed to target drones that are built in China and by China or Iran and basically preventing government agencies from using them. Now, we talked about this as well in the past in this series where we talked about how DJI was getting attacked for the security of the data and how the data was being sent. They replied by having the DJI, um, and I can't remember the name of it now, but they had a special version of the DJI drone that was not sending any data through the internet. Uh, now this bill, if it passes, essentially what it's going to do is going to prevent any government agencies related to Homeland Security from using, purchasing, uh, it says in here in quotation, operating, providing financial assistance or enter into or renew a contract for UAS and a whole bunch of other things in the list. Uh, this is actually as picky as if the 
uh, the camera equipment is manufactured in China, which as you know is a lot of uh, camera equipment out there, then this would also be forbidden by this bill right here. So we'll see where this goes. If I hear more about it, I'll definitely keep you guys posted. But I think this is going to be interesting. Uh, hopefully some American manufacturer can step up to the plate and, and get the contract and provide something for our government, which I think would be a, a great idea. We'll finish this with a Drones for Good. Actually, I have one more topic after this, but Drones for Good story. Uh, you may have seen it in the news. This kid, six-year-old kid, decides to go walking his dog uh, later in the day and gets lost in the woods and ends up being out there for over 10 hours in the cold, uh, freezing almost. And um, gentleman is on social media, sees this. He's a drone pilot, commercial drone pilot. He has a, an infrared camera on his drone and decides to go and help the search and rescue people. There's like 700 people in that little village that go looking for this kid and he finds the kid with the camera. I think it's an amazing story. Uh, if you haven't seen it, just, just type it up. I'm gonna put a link in here uh, to an article in the Washington Post that I found. Uh, just, just really cool story and, and just to show you what the technology can do and, uh, and how drones can probably save this kid's life. I mean, he was out there with his dog and for, like I said, over 10 hours, uh, temperatures getting below freezing. They were out there until one in the morning and he finally flew and uh, saw a little patch. So that was the dog actually, saw where the dog was and then was able to send a volunteer to go pick up the kid. So I think it's an amazing story. Love uh, hearing these stories and I hope we hear more of these in the future. Uh, not kids getting lost, kids getting found because they get lost. One more thing before I let you guys go, uh, there's a DJI event scheduled for October 30th and you may have heard of the, the, um, the Mavic Mini. We talked about the Mavic Mini in the past in this when the, the rumors first started. Looks like it's going to be a sub 250 gram drone uh, priced at 399 and it looks like it's also going to have 4K capabilities. So kind of a big deal out there if you have a, a DJI Mavic or if you have the, the one before that, the Mavic Air, this could be a, a replacement for the drone at a really cheap price and at sub 250. Now, obviously not for everyone. If you're a commercial pilot, a sub 250 gram uh, drone is not gonna do much for you. Any wind is gonna make it bumpy. But I think for the industry as a whole and for uh, people getting into the, the, the hobby and getting into flying drones for fun. I think this is going to be a great thing. So that's all I have. As always, you know what to do. Like the video, leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you haven't seen the video from last week, uh, we had a, uh, an interview for a podcast with Mark Taylor from Aerial um, productions in extreme aerial production, sorry, in Phoenix. And uh, it's a 50 minute podcast. Uh, talk to Mark about all the stuff that he's done to get this business started. So if you're thinking of starting a business, definitely listen to the podcast. He's got a lot of tips and uh, very realistic guy. So be ready for uh, not rosy sugar coated advices, but something from someone who's done this and has done it really well. He's got the, the biggest drone company in Arizona at the moment providing services across the entire country. So uh, if you haven't seen that, go ahead and do that. And then as always, the part 107 course, if you want to get ready for uh, part 107 to get your remote pilot certificate, we've got the course for you, 12 and a half hours, 250 practice questions, as many tests as you want to do and limited and uh, join the other 5,000 students that we have doing this. And uh, that's it. That's the entire speech that I'm going to have for now. I'm going to say have a great weekend, fly safe, and I will see you next week for a hey, Halloween next week uh, on the following day after uh, I record this thing. So see you then. Thank you.